a circuit from a battery charger wet lead acid battery that's here in the circuit positive negative and this charger can last for many many years I don't know how long uh, factory made charges can last I never bought one of them but this is a very sturdy circuit this is how it was made we gonna look at it on a later moment in the video this is a 12 volt solar panel it was designed for a 12 volt solar panel and we see here that the open circuit voltage is 20 uh, 22.6 the maximum power voltage, so under a certain load, is 18.1. The maximum power current is 5.5 ampere. The short circuit current is 5.9 ampere. And the efficiency approximately 15.3%. It was a Chinese so uh, solar panel that I bought. Uh, the short circuit current, I never use it. It's the, the current where you will uh, damage the solar, the solar panel severely. So this is the safe current that the solar panel can give, approximately 5.5 ampere. I always use in such a circuit a diode, heavy diode, silicon diode. You can make such a diode from a bridge rectifier. Here you see that diode. In fact, it's a bridge rectifier uh, connected in a certain way, a completely logical way, uh, by the way. And um, it makes sure that there is never uh, a failure uh, when you reverse accidentally your solar panel. Always use a fuse here, 7 ampere. I think it's a good. Uh, uh, value 7 ampere though we know that the short circuit current is approximately 6 ampere it's 1 ampere too high and when you want to stay on the safe side take 5 ampere for instance but there is a certain risk that on a very very sunny day the fuse uh, burns out here we have a very classical circuit from two parallel 2N3055 power transistors driven by two BD139 NPN uh, medium power transistors. So it's a whole bunch of transistors here, but the only aim is to drive these two transistors completely out to saturation so that the maximum current can flow in the circuit. That's the aim, that's why I used here two parallel um, two N3055 transistors and here the first driver, the second driver and these two end transistors are parallel. You see how I made it. I have given both uh, two N3055 transistors a separate heatsink. I've done that to uh, give them maximum cooling Here's the bridge rect rectifier again, and here we see the BD139, this is one driver, and somewhere here, here, there is the first driver, and the first driver doesn't need any cooling, so it's not mounted on a heatsink. The second driver gets a little bit warm and is mounted on a heatsink. Um, back to the circuit again. Uh, a small computer fan uh, supplied via a 120 ohms power resistor that's here this one and that one and this is of course the computer fan that we all know from uh, the computers that we use every day it works uh, properly the use of a resistor uh, has drawbacks because Sometimes the fan, when you choose the value too high, 
the fan doesn't want to start. But experiment it all out, no problem. And here I use a 10 microfarad bipolar capacitor. In fact, it's paralleled to the battery. And the reason is that um, sometimes in very, very peculiar situations, the circuit can start to oscillate. And this capacitor here damps the oscillation. So that's the function from this capacitor. Uh, it sounds strange and perhaps it doesn't always oscillate, it only oscillates in very peculiar situations. Uh, I can't explain exactly why it oscillates, but that's what I have found. And by the way, when your circuit here starts to oscillate, uh, you can mount here between the base and the collector a capacitor that must be a bipolar capacitor here and also here and also here uh, that are um, ways to uh, prevent oscillation from the circuit and the reason that it oscillates has to do with the extreme uh, current amplification we have here a three stage driver and the extreme current amplification can have the effect that the circuit starts to oscillate. Though I've tested this thoroughly, this circuit, and it did not oscillate. I had this problem in my 24 volt solar energy system oscillations, and they were damped in the way that I have uh, told. This is the front. Now, in the middle of the screen, you see the homebrew amperimeter made with a shunt. I have already made a few videos about that. This is the shunt, this bunch of wire here. It was uh, adapted experimentally so that I could use a sensitive microvoltmeter, microamperimeter, as an um, amperimeter for approximately 4 ampere. And it indicates a charge current. This is the fuse. The fuse is mounted on the outside and the reason is that it can be easily exchanged. We have already uh, also an off and on switch for safety reasons. And furthermore there's not so much to tell about the circuit. Perhaps this, here you see some diodes. One of them is a Zener diode and the other ones here these normal diodes, 1N4007, uh, with these four diodes in series you can adapt the output voltage. This is the Zener diode. The Zener diode is 13 volts, but we have here a cascade circuit, cascade circuit from uh, 1, 2, 3 transistors and there is a voltage drop in each transistor from approximately 0.6 or 0.7 or perhaps 0.8 it depends somewhat on the load volt so we need on the base here a higher voltage than we need at the output to the battery that's the reason why here four five diodes are mounted uh, and they are mounted with their cathode reversed to the Zener diode. But that's uh, completely logical and uh, test it out, try it out, it will work. And here you also see that I've mounted a 1 microfarad uh, 100 volt or 300 volt bipolar diode, uh, sorry, capacitor to prevent oscillations. I hope it's uh, clear. It's very easy to uh, parallel the two N3055 transistors. That's very easy. Uh, you can easily solder them in parallel. One thing is very important for all the transistors in this driver. In fact, it's a driver. They need a good beta. 
amplification factor. It must be 50 for the 2N3055 and this transistor must have a beta from approximately 150. Use the BD139, it's a good uh, transistor, medium power and uh, uh, the special thing about this transistor is that it can have a very high base voltage, even 80 volts. And that's the reason why I used uh, this, these two BD139s in the driver. Of course there's here a LED, simple LED, 1K resistor, red LED or so. And it indicates that the system is on.